<laughs> hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, recording vertically as always, because you know what, we got something important to talk about, when we talk about important stuff, we gotta record vertically, we're gonna be talking about critic bait, okay, there's been a couple of critic bait, uh, critic bait, ah, a few critic bait albums this year that have been released. And uh, what's a critic bait album? That's a good question. There's a, uh, it's basically an album that's designed to story slot in the top fifty albums without you actually having to give a crap about the album. Now, of course, you know there'll be plenty of critics who'll do this who don't always review a ton of music. <sighs> Sorry for the yawn, but it's mostly publications, large, uh, large names that'll do this. Uh, uh, like publication, like like honestly, there's certain artists that are guaranteed, like a certain albums that seem to be guaranteed scores before they even come out. I mean, you see it where like these huge publications will immediately give albums scores like as soon as they're released. And it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, I don't have the names in front of me, but just if you go to like albumtheyear.org or just like keep track of them, like. They, they get their hands either on an early copy and just like immediately day before they want to get the review out as quick as possible. And so they give it an 80. Uh, it almost seems like it's paid off. But at the same time, you know, uh, the new Jan Janelle Monet album. That's that's a big example. But I could also say the K Casey Musgrave album. Because I'm not completely, uh, you know, not guilty of this. I've, I've definitely picked out a couple of critic bait albums. But they're basically like filler for your uh, year-end list is like, uh, you know, you don't have to listen to and review every single album. Uh, you understand that an album, like say if it's a Kendrick Lamar album, I know Kendrick Lamar comes out with like ton of quality, but even Damn, like Damn was a mediocre project. Uh, <laughs> people are gonna get on my ass, but I have not come back to Damn since I've listened to it last year. Um, uh, yeah, so stuff like that, it's just, it's it's like guaranteed a high score. Uh, and the new Janelle Monet was the same exact thing. I, I honestly could not stand that album. Uh, Spectrum Pulse gave it a 9. Anthony Fantano gave it an 8. I think Air TV gave it either an 8 or 9. Um, and it's beyond belief for that because the this like I think Arc Android's fantastic. But man, like the smaller reviewers are on my side, okay? The the small community is like, wait a minute, you know, this this album's bullshit. Ryan's on my side. Uh damn, I I I don't know the rest. And and hell, a lot of people like the album good. Good. You like the album? This doesn't apply to you, but there's a lot of people who can easily just listen to this thing and say, "Yeah, it's good for what it is. I'll give it an 8." And fine. You know, that's just kind of how it works with these kinds of albums. Uh the Casey Musgrave album Game out a little while ago. Uh, I really liked it. I thought it was good. I thought it was uh, sweet, so I gave it a 9. Now, did it deserve a 9? No, it didn't. But it was something... I, I lowered it now, because like, my opinion definitely changed over time. But it's something where, you know, it's it's the hype on release. Every single publication was given a high score. So you just kind of follow along. And that's also with Critic Bait. That's, that's another big point of it. Is it's pretty much something that kind of is like a chain effect, right? If that makes sense. Example, Arctic Monkeys, uh, AM, Suck It and See, uh, a good handful of their albums, like, they, they just have the lineup of positive critics, even if the album is just mediocre. It almost just doesn't matter at all about quality, it just instantly becomes, like, uh, everyone fitting in and just saying, oh yeah, yeah, everyone loves this album, you know, so I gotta love it too. And that's kind of been going on. That's like nothing new, but still. I, those two albums specifically. Now, of course, I've had a couple of albums that I've rated that I've gone against the grain with. Apologies for this guy. Goddamn. It's a little late. Beer Bongs and Bentley specifically was an album that basically got mixed opinions from everywhere, but I still think that album's really good. It's like a decent eight. Um... It's something where that you really just got to make your own opinions. And if they'd fall in line with other critics, good. But it's it's about just keeping the credibility. And even that with that being said, like the Casey Musgrave album, I'm still going to put that in my year and list somewhere. Even though, I mean, I haven't really come back to it. But yeah, it's, it's definitely something where I listened to it, I enjoyed it. But even though I don't return to it, 
it's it's still something that you know it fills a slot it makes my life easier anyways my name is bradley i've brought this music and this was a rant whatever peace